grace and peace, new hope. I said grace and peace, new hope. We are here in the sanctuary. We come to lift up the name of Jesus on this morning because God has been good to us. And whether you are joining us from your living room, from your car, even those that are fortunate to be at your job, we just want to worship the Lord on today. Hallelujah. Our scripture for today is coming from John, the 14th chapter, verses 26 and 27. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace, not the world's, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world give, giveth I unto you. But let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Hallelujah, and the word of the Lord is blessed. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you thanking you for leaving us your peace, God, and leaving us your comfort to keep us and to sustain us in these trying times. God, we know that you are the only true and living God and that you are on the throne. You sit high and look low. You are mindful of us. You haven't forgotten us. And I thank you, God, for keeping us in the midst of these storms. Father, we acknowledge all of our sins and transgressions. We acknowledge there are things we didn't do or say that was pleasing to you, God. But we repent on today. We change our ways, God. We're turning back to you. We're turning right now in our homes. We're turning, God, in our hearts. We're turning, God, in our minds back to you, God. We pray right now that you would heal the land, that you would restore us back to you. Turn us back to you, God, in the name of Jesus, so that we can have that peace that surpasses all understanding. We come against every attack of the enemy. We condemn every ungodly soul tie everything that is not like God, every spirit that is holding our people hostage, we break and destroy every yoke of bondage. In the name of Jesus, we're taking on your yoke, God, because your yoke is easy and your burdens are light. And we want the peace that surpasses all understanding. Now bless us, God, as we go forth to carry out your assignment to lift up the name of Jesus and to lead someone else to you. We pray that hearts will be transformed. Minds will be renewed through the word of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the name of the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the name of the Lord, everybody. How many come to worship God? I said, how many come to worship God? Can you declare out of your mouth, I am a free worshiper? Come on. I am a free worshiper. Hey, yes, hey, God. Hey. So says this. Free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Free to dance and sing. Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Lord, I'm free. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. I'm a free worshiper. Oh Lord, I'm free. Everybody, come on. Free to dance. Free to dance with Free to lift my hands and worship. Lord, I'm free. Lord, I'm free. Come on, say. And I thank God I'm free, and I'll never be found again. Can I testify again? Hey, I thank God I'm free, 
and down to heaven be bound again. If you agree, can you say it with me? Thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. And I'll never, and I'll never be bound again. Come on, from wherever you are, say, I thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm free. And I'll never, and I'll never be bound again. And if you're free, come on, say, oh. Come on, open your mouth and bless him. Come on, open your mouth and bless him. Come on, lift your hands. Right there in your living room, I want you to sing this with your family. Come on. I am free. Pray. Praise the Lord. Come on, get with your family and let them know we're no longer. One more time. Lift your voice and say, I am, I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. I'm no longer. No longer. Come on, lift your voice and say it like you believe it. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise. Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise the Lord. Praise. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Come on, clap your hands like the devil's head is between them. Come on, clap them like you got the victory. Oh! Do me a favor, I want you to declare to somebody, not only am I free, come on, tell them, not only am I free, but tell them I'll never be bound again. Tell them I'll never be bound again. Because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Come on, open your mouth and give them praise. Week number three, we can't be in the sanctuary. But even though we're not in the sanctuary, God is still on the throne. God is still sitting on the throne. I said God is still sitting on the throne. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Help me give God praise for this music ministry. We give God praise, glory, and honor for them. To everyone in their rightful places. To all of you, my father's children, to the New Hope Church, and those of you who are not from New Hope who are viewing this from wherever you are alive. We thank you right now. Thank God for you right now. We appreciate you watching us. We miss you so very much. But this is, I believe, necessary time for God to do what he needs to do in us and through us and with us. And so we are thankful to God for all of his goodness and his mercy toward us. To all of you who continue to work diligently to make this broadcast happen. To our media and our marketing team. We thank God for you. I want you to take a moment right now and give God praise for your loved ones that you're able to enjoy. I know it seems like it's something that is just commonplace, that our loved ones are always going to be there. But so many people are losing their loved ones. So many people are passing from this life to the next. And I shared a word with my son, Pastor Chris, last night that I will not share with you all, but I do know that God is up to something. He's up to something and he's doing something. And regardless of what your belief is on who is in control of the pandemic, the government belief or satanic belief, one thing that I believe is that God is in control. He never loses control. He never loses control. And so we thank God and we praise God now for all that he is doing. We appreciate you. For those of you who have been watching us, uh, we appreciate you the last two Sundays and the last two Tuesdays. Um, we were preaching a message, a series of messages entitled God Wants Us Back. But I'm about to start a new series um, here that I'm pretty excited about. And then we're also kicking off Holy Week. Palm Sunday is today. And we thank God for you all. And we thank God for just the, the ability to be here. We, we never imagined Palm Sunday would be celebrated this way. We thought we would be able to be in the sanctuary and get some palms and um, wear them. Some, you know, you real Baptist if you put the palm on your, on your stuff, but that's the way we grew up. Um, but God had another plan, and he's shifting us into a new normal. He's transitioning us, um, but we will be back. I'm excited to preach today because I want you to see something in this that I hope will encourage you as we start this Holy Week. I have my announcements later on. We're going to get into the Word of God, and I'll give you what we're going to do for Holy Week a little later on. Um, those of you who are accustomed to standing, um, let's do that for the Word of God. Even if you're in your home, of course, if you're in your car driving or on the job, if you can't stand, that's fine. Um, but it is our custom just because in the Old Testament, they would stand all day and they would read the Word of God. The priest would read the Word of God. The scribes, they would read the Word of God to the people all day. And they stood for the Word of God. We're going to go to two chapters, two chapters on today we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 32 Isaiah chapter 32 I hope you guys are praying for me um, I, 
the word of God always means so much to me. Um, I live to preach the word of God, but even now so more than ever, it seems as if I want and my desire is for this word to reach a target, for it to hit its targeted area. So hopefully you're praying and keeping me lifted up that the word of God would be powerful, that it would be able to be given with clarity. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 32. I'm going to read two verses, verse 1 and 2, and then we're going to go to Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to read verse 8, verse 15 through verse 19. Um, or 18 we'll see so Isaiah chapter 32 and then Matthew chapter 16 and I'll read verses 15 through chapter 18 or 9 through verse 18 or 19 all right Isaiah chapter 32 beginning with verse number one says behold a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment and a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert or cover from the tempest or the storm as rivers of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. I want to just read verse 2 again. And a man, somebody say a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the storm as rivers of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land my god matthew chapter 16 and we'll bring it all together matthew chapter 16 matthew chapter 16 I love his word. Does anybody else love his word? I love his word. Matthew chapter 16, verse number 15 says, And he saith unto them, But I say ye that, whom say ye that I am? Very familiar passage of scripture. He first asked them, Who do men say that I am? Some say thou art Elijah, some say Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Whom say ye that I am? Verse 15. And Simon in verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. I want to bring to your attention um, what he says in verse 13, though. In verse 13, he says, Whom do men say I, the Son of Man, am? It's very important that you understand that. And then listen to what Peter says. Even though he asked, Who do, ye, or who do men say I, the Son of Man, am? Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. I want you to notice he did not repeat back to Jesus who Jesus said he was. Jesus was asking, who do men say I, the son of man, am? Peter answers back, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Notice he says, upon this rock I'm going to build my church. And then in Isaiah, he talks about there's going to be a great rock that we can find shadow in, a great rock that's in a weary land. I think right now this world qualifies as a weary land. I think what we're dealing with right now, the whole entire world is weary in some way or another. So I want to talk for the next few weeks uh, on Sundays and whenever Tuesday I get an opportunity, I want to talk about a rock in a weary land. I just want to talk about a rock in a weary land. Come on, clap your hands if you believe God's going to speak to us this morning. He is a rock in a weary land. How many of you believe that? Isaiah, the writer of our text today, it is said that the opening of Isaiah chapter 32, verse number 1, 
was a reference to Hezekiah's reign. When he says, behold, a king shall reign in righteousness and princes shall rule in judgment. The commentaries will tell you when you study it that it is referencing Isaiah or Hezekiah because Isaiah was a prophet during Hezekiah's reign. And so he's reigning in Hezekiah. If you know anything about Hezekiah, you know he was a righteous king. And he's letting Israel know that there's going to come a time where there will be righteousness in authority. Isaiah was the greatest influence on King Hezekiah's reign. But you must understand, this cannot just be simply looked at Literally, it must be typified, which means the Old Testament always gives us types and shadows of what we can really look to in the New Testament. So the focus here is not just Hezekiah. The focus has to be on the fact that Isaiah is known as the eagle eye prophet. The reason he's known as the eagle eye prophet is because he sees a savior so far in the future thousands of years before he is set to come he sees that the savior is going to come and so when you look at how Isaiah prophesied and you look at what Isaiah talked to Israel about and the things that he said to Israel and looking at even our text today understand he's not just talking about Hezekiah he is talking about Jesus Christ is typified here so far from his entrance of the into the earth he He's thousands of years before he's going to come to the earth. He's thousands of years before he's actually going to come and make his entrance through a virgin called Mary. But Isaiah can see him. Isaiah can see him in the future. And I want you to make sure you stay locked into that because we're going to deal with it later on. Because there are some things you're going to have to see before they happen. If, if, if you're going to have any kind of hope, your vision and your eyesight cannot be locked into what you're in right now. I'm, I'm very early in my message, but I'm already preaching. You, you're, you cannot be so locked into what you're going through that you don't see anything else. Look at somebody and say, I see it getting better. I see it. I see it getting better. So Isaiah is not just talking about Hezekiah. Isaiah is talking about Jesus. He is a old testament shadow of what is to come he's talking to them about what's going to happen and the peace and 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 the salvation that's going to come despite everything that's going on isaiah's ministry was always rooted in making sure israel knew that despite their bondage assyrian bondage and babylonian bondage he wanted them to always look to a savior he wanted them to always know that in even in rough times a savior is on its way that jesus is coming in the midst of all of these tough times in the midst of all of this bondage they've already been through egyptian bondage and he is steadily prophesying about assyrian bondage and Babylonian bondage which happens later but he's telling them even though all of these things even haven't happened yet I need you to be able to look through these things and be able to see that help is on the way can you tell somebody help is on the way help is on the way I need you to be able to understand prophetically that even though tough times will come I need you to see that there's going to be an end to your tough times even before they happen because prophecy is always meant to make sure that God's people are not blind concerning their future I need you to understand this that we have we have we have taken prophecy out of its context. We have we have used prophecy to glorify ourselves. We have used prophecy uh, to, 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 to woo God's people. And God's people were never meant to be wooed by the prophet. 
prophecy if you're going to woo anybody is to woo the people towards God because I'm supposed to be able to see something that has not happened yet but it's supposed to lead the people back to God if prophecy is not going to make me believe God but it makes me believe more in you then you may not be a prophet you might be a witch you might be a warlock you might be a soothsayer but any prophecy that I'm going to get is supposed to point me that there is a savior coming watch it watch it even understand that even while God is prophesying doom even while God is prophesying bondage even while God is prophesying tough times he never leaves them without the fact that tough times won't last look at somebody and tell them tough times won't last tough tough times won't last y'all not saying it like you mean I need you to shout it whether you at home or whether you in the sanctuary I need you to shout tough times won't last this particular portion of the prophecy he's preparing them concerning Assyrian captivity this particular prophecy he's talking to them in chapter 32 about the fact that you're about to go into Assyrian captivity but understand that Hezekiah is going to be a righteous king but then there's a king coming that is the king of kings and he's the Lord of Lords keep in mind these hard times these tough times were based on their own disobedience y'all don't want to have church but I'm going to have it anyway Th these tough times were not God's fault these tough times these bondages that they kept going in were based upon their own disobedience yet in all of this God uses the prophet to encourage the people that these tough times will not last but my people will I wish I had somebody that knew that even when I'm a mess and even when I'm messed up and even when God sends things to get my attention and even when God allows me to go through mess because I'm a mess, tough times never last but God's people will last. Can you do me a favor and encourage somebody who's in your vicinity if you're driving just pull over and yell it out the window. Tell them tough times won't last but if you're God's child you will. Tell them the storm is going to pass over it won't always be like this it won't always be like this but God is allowing you to know that trouble will not last always weeping may endure for a night but joy is coming in the morning I need you to hold on to the prophetic word that even in this there is a sun trying to peek through the clouds look at somebody say this won't kill me this won't kill me this won't kill me Bishop how can you say that when so many people have lost their life I say that because even the Bible tells me that to live is Christ and to die is gain so I'm a I, there's a foolproof plan built on the inside of me that either way I win I wish I had somebody that really believed the Bible I know we don't like to talk about it because our hope is so much in earthly things that we can't imagine that God will allow me to graduate from this life to the next but graduating from this life to the next is not a demotion it's a promotion so no matter what the devil tries to do in all of this I know that yea in all things I'm more than a conqueror there's nothing the devil can do with me because even if I die I still win look at somebody and tell them because I'm his child I still win I still win I still win the devil is a liar we need to pull the scales off of this fear you can't be running around here being afraid it's okay to be safe it's okay to sanitize your hands wear your mask keep your six feet but don't you walk around here afraid you better know that I believe God no matter what I have faith and I have confidence in God because there are more people being healed from the virus than there are dying from the virus because God is still on the throne he's still on the throne you got to understand that prophecy prophecy will have you praising in the midst of storms and so this prophet Isaiah is trying to give Israel some hope he's trying to give Israel some peace concerning this matter telling them that even though you're going through tough times and even though it's rough right now you got to understand that there is coming a one that's going to give you peace y'all sit down I'm just talking to you I want you to listen to the poetry of this text because the 
poetry is amazing. The poetry in this text is amazing. Listen what he says in verse number two. He says, and a man shall be as a hiding place. Who do you think that man is? It's not Hezekiah. It's not just an earthly king. That man is Jesus. A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the storm as rivers of water in a drop place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land he's saying that there's coming a man that shall be a hiding place from strong wind you ever been outside on a strong windy day not just regular wind but imagine a tornado kind of wind the kind of wind where you don't need to really be outside your hats flying off trees are bowing and bending he's saying that this man is a cover from that kind of wind he's a cover from that kind of storm whenever you're in a dry place this this man is water in dry places. Now, I know Hezekiah was an awesome king, but Hezekiah does not have these qualifications. Hezekiah cannot cover me in, uh, in times of storm. Hezekiah cannot give me a hiding place in the midst of strong winds. Hezekiah, he got 15 years added to his life, but Hezekiah cannot be water in a dry place. Hezekiah definitely cannot be a rock in a weary land. I'm getting ready to deal with that rock, but can I hear the voices of people who have ever known Jesus to be a hiding place in the midst of strong winds? I feel like preaching. I feel I don't know what's going to happen when we get back to the sanctuary cuz ain't nobody in here and I feel like I'm preaching to 2000 people. I need you to understand that Jesus is a shelter. This is why the old pope folks used to say it. He's a shelter in the time of storm. They ain't saying cute stuff like we say now. We just make up stuff that ain't even in the Bible. The old folks knew the Bible. That's why they called him a shelter in the time of storm because Isaiah let us know that this man that was coming, somebody say this man. I bet not talk about this man too much because last week I couldn't even finish my message talking about that man. But this particular man is shelter in the time of a storm. He is water in a dry place. Can I talk to some people who are watching this by Facebook and this season has transitioned you into a dry place? It's transitioned you into a place where your money is not flowing like it used to be. Your peace is not flowing like it used to be. You're not as happy as you used to be. But God said, this man, somebody say this man, this man is water in dry places. I better watch my voice because I hear God coming in the room. I can feel God coming in your living room. I need you to speak over your house and speak to your children and tell them we won't be dry for long. Come on. Tell them we won't be dry for long because I know a man Ooh, who's water in dry places he's water he's water he's water he's water and he is a rock he's a rock in a weary land he's a rock He's a rock in a weary land on, on an exhausting journey in the midst of a storm, in the midst of raging, uh, raging storms and being exposed to the heat of sun. Never forget that you're on your way somewhere. Never forget that this is a journey. Prophecy helps me to understand that I'm on my way somewhere because it tells me that even though I'm pressed on all sides and even though I'm going through something like this, an epidemic something that we've never seen before we we don't know what to tell our children because we've never seen it before we can't open the history books and see how they handled it because we've never dealt with this before we can't call nobody we can't go to another country and see exactly how to handle this because we've never experienced this on this level before but you cannot forget the words of prophecy that he will be a rock in a weary land because it tells me that no matter what I have to go through we're going to get through this 
It lets me know that I can't die today because my prophecy is for tomorrow. I, I, I got to know that God's going to pull me in this, out of this. I got to know that even though there are some that will not be on earth when this is over, there's a remnant of us that have to get through it because we got something to do when this is over. Who am I talking to? I need you to open your mouth and declare this over your life. My current condition is not my conclusion. I need you to speak it. My current condition is not my conclusion and I'm going to find safety and rest in the shadow of a rock that's in a weary land can I talk to some people that are weary will you be honest about the fact that you're just sick and tired of this you're tired, you're tired, you're tired of being at home you're tired of the weird work hours if you're working at all you're tired of losing business you're tired of not knowing what tomorrow's going to bring you're tired of fighting the fear of getting sick you're weary, you're tired it's forcing you in spaces uh, for long periods of time you can't get a break you can't go out and express yourself like you would normally do, do but, but, but you're weary but I want you to understand and that rest is found in the shadow of the rock in a weary land and I know that the land is weary and this message will go out to many of you who couldn't be in this sanctuary today even though the land is weary I want you to understand that the rock is still here that the rock has not gone anywhere he's still here somebody holler the rock is still here the rock the rock the rock is still here. I got to deal with this rock. And then I'll let you go so you can enjoy the rest of your day. Matthew chapter 16. It, Christ reveals to us the mystery of the rock. The mystery of the rock is revealed in Matthew chapter 16. He asks them, he says in verse 13, he says, Who do men say, listen to me, that I the son of man am? Listen to how he presents himself. Because you know we serve a savior who is very intentional. He does not waste words. He does not just say it in everything. If he presents himself as the son of man, he's doing that on purpose. It, it, the, the son of man suggests to us that he is the leader of man. He is the leader of mankind. Yes, he is God's son, but he is the, the leader of mankind. So he is really dealing with this earth realm. In other words, he is the greatest man to have ever walked the earth. He is the king of kings but he came as a man. He had to eat like a man. He had to sleep like a man. He had emotions like a man. Listen, he was tempted like a man. He, he had all of these things that men dealt with and he presents himself as the son of man because this is a quiz. This is a pop quiz. I wonder, I wonder if this were just a test that we were going through, how many of us would really pass how many of us would pass the test? How many would? He, he asked them, who, who, who do men say that I am? I, I want to know who the men who don't walk with me say that I, the son of man, am. C can, in other words, can they really see who I really am? And he, they said, some say thou art it, Jeremiah. Some say that thou art Elijah uh, or, or one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? Now, understand something. Watch, watch something real close. They knew what the gossip was on Jesus but they did not know Jesus for themselves they, they, they knew what other people said about them but when he got ready to ask them what do you say about me there was one in the bunch that spoke up with the right revelation isn't it dangerous for you to know what the world says but don't know what Jesus really has to say isn't it dangerous for you to know all of the facts and all of the things that the world is talking and speaking but really don't know who Jesus is you're trying to watch all of these videos and watch all of this that and the other to figure out what's going on in the world that God created and he's in control of in the first place how about if you really want to know who he is if you really want to know what's going on why not ask Ask the man that made the world. Why not ask the one who made it? He's presenting himself in this human experience with us. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? The man who walked 
walks with them. The man who feeds 5,000 because I got to eat like y'all have to eat. The man who met a woman at the well because I have to drink like y'all have to drink. The man who was asleep at the bottom of the boat while the storm was raging because I have to sleep like y'all have to sleep. Who do men say that that man is? Because even though I am a man, I want to know if you can see beyond the man and see who I really am. In order to save man, he could not just be a man. So even though he was a man, he was the son of man because he was the leader of man. But he was not just the leader of man because man can't save itself. Some say you are Jeremiah. Some say Elijah. Who do you say that I am? Peter says, thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ. Thou art the Christ. And I feel like taking my time through here because there's something that we always talk about with Peter. We always talk about how Peter had a big mouth. We always talk about how Peter denied Jesus, and he did. And we always talk about how Peter had a cussing problem, and he did. But Peter had revelation that nobody else had. I wish I had somebody in here because we got to stop judging people by what we deem to be right. And just because you feel like somebody's not qualified doesn't mean they're not qualified. Give me somebody who has a little bit of a cuss in their tongue but know who Jesus is. Give me somebody who may be a little bit uh, schizophrenic, who may be a little bit all over the place, but they know who Jesus. Give me somebody who may be a little bit in and out. They love the Lord, but they know who he is. I'm tired of these fake people who try to act like they know Jesus and they don't really know who he is. If you needed a prayer, they don't even know the words to prayer. If you needed them to lay hands, they have no power. If you needed a verse to get you through, they know no words. They have no revelation of who Jesus is, but Peter said, I know that when I was on that boat and the storm was raging, I heard you say, peace, be still. Even though you were asleep, you got up and rebuked the winds and the wave. I know, Jesus, that it was you that I was walking on the water to. Even though I started to sink, I know that I only saw two fish and five loaves and I know there was at least 15,000 people out there and I saw with my own eyes where you broke the bread and fed 5,000 not counting the women and children I can't forget what I saw you're not just a man you're my savior you are the Christ the son of the living God there's no way you could just be a man there's no way you could just be a man I've seen I've seen I've seen I've seen too much with these eyes I've seen you come in and heal fever I heard you say to Lutha to Lutha Kume which means damsel arise I saw when you stopped and interrupted the boy's funeral and made him get up and live again I saw Oh, you unstopped deaf ears and open blinded eyes. You are not just a man. Thou art the Christ. Not only are you the Christ, you are the son. Not just a man, but you're the son of the living God. I, I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but there are some of you that don't believe God that may be watching this and you're making a mockery of the church right now. Just forget the church for one minute and know that we serve a risen Savior. Know that we serve a God who's very much alive that died for our sins but he, he was risen from the grave because his father rose him from the grave and regardless of what you think about the church you need to know that we serve the son of the living God somebody say he's the son of the living God Peter sees beyond the man and he sees God he sees beyond the flesh realm listen to me and he says thou art the Christ son of the living God here is the recipe we have to stop moving according to our flesh because the world may move by fear but the just shall live by faith which means we got to have sight beyond sight we have to have sight in another realm we have to be able to see beyond what's going on in the world 
We got to be able to look beyond all the shutdowns. We got to look beyond all of the businesses being closed and all of the people dying and folks getting sick and the mask and the gloves. We got to look beyond all of that. It has its rightful place. But we have to see in a realm that there are no gloves and masks and see what God is really doing. When Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus says unto him, Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. He says, and thou art Peter. The word Peter, the Greek word is the word Petros. Listen to me. It means a large piece of an even bigger rock. There it is. He says, he says, he says, thou art Peter. That word Peter, he says, Peter, you got some of me inside of you. He says, and upon this rock, I will build my church. Can I just navigate slowly through here for a minute? Because I need you to understand. I need you to understand that a couple of things he's saying to Peter. Number one, he's telling Peter that you've got more inside of you than what you know. In other words, I am the rock, Peter, but I live on the inside of you. Greater is he. Come on. That is where in me than what? Than he that is in the world. As long as I have the rock on the inside then it doesn't matter what's going on in the world I can live through whatever epidemic comes my way because I carry the rock on the inside of me. Jesus says I'm going to build my church on this rock. I'm going to erect my church. It means it's going higher. Somebody say we're going up. I'm going to construct my church, which means it's coming together. Somebody say it's coming together. He says, I'm going to edify my church. These are the definitions of the word bill, which means it's going to get better. Y'all missed it, so I'll say it again. He says, I'm going to build my church on this rock. The word build means to erect, which means it's going higher. Somebody say we're going higher. Not just when we get back in the sanctuary. Right now, the church of the living God is being elevated. And when we come back together, we'll be higher than we were when we left off. Not only are we going higher, but he said, I'm going to build. It means I'm going to construct my church, which means it's coming together. Somebody say, we're coming together. We're coming together. We were broken, but we're coming together. We were unified. We were disunified, but we're coming together. We will no longer be divided. We're coming together. Everything thing was all over the place but he's building us he's constructing us we're coming together somebody say we're coming together and then he says I'm going to edify you the word edify it means to make you better I'm going to be better than I was before I got into this I need you to open your mouth and just say the church of the living God will be better after this I'm going to build my church on what on what on upon this rock now I've heard us quote this for so many years but there is a key piece that we leave out we we we, we church this real good this church is real good uh, on Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground is sink and stand I'm built on the rock I'm standing on the rock I got the rock living down on the inside of me but there's a key piece because if you logically think about this logos the words if you think logically about what's what it's saying there what does that really mean that I got the rock what what does it mean it, it means it means nothing actually if I don't really understand what he's saying remember he says to Peter flesh and blood did not reveal this to you and so he says uh, thou art Peter and upon this rock I'm going to build my church so even though we say it's Jesus what the rock really is is the revelation of who Jesus is so you can say the name Jesus, but if you've never been if he's never been revealed to you, then you really don't have anything to stand on. This is why so many people can be in church but still be weak. This is why we can come to church every Sunday and you can teach Sunday school and you can even wear a collar and you can do all of these things, sing in the praise team, be a deacon, be whatever you are, but still be weak in times of trouble because you're saying you got Jesus, but you don't have no revelation. I'm talking to somebody. Your eyes have to be open. You have to be able to see in a realm that is unseen by normal eyes. I'm ready to go home. I need y'all to get this. I need you to understand that the reason we will 
survive the storm is because of the rock. Somebody say because of the rock. Don't forget what Isaiah said. A man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place as the great shadow of a rock in a weary land. The reason I'm going to survive the storm and the reason I have water in dry places is because in the midst of all of this weariness there is a rock somebody say there is a rock somebody say there is a rock the church is not built on facts I don't care what the facts say let the facts be the facts find out what you need to know but the church is built on revelation there should be a different conversation from what the doctors are saying and what the churches are saying. We should be in compliance and we should be standing in faith. <laughs> I should have on a mask and gloves while I'm saying I believe God. We should be in empty sanctuaries until they allow us to go back, but we should never stop proclaiming the word of God because the church is not built on facts. The church is built on revelation we should be able to tell the doctors when this is going to be over we should be able to see and see what God is doing we should be able to let the world know how this thing is going to go because I see the rock and the reason I'm surviving is because I'm not no weak I'm not, I'm not weak I'm not I'm not a punk I got something in me that's strong I got a rock living on the inside of me. Why is it a rock? It's a rock because I see so much of Jesus that no matter what's going on, you can't shake me. Because every time it gets dark, I see better days ahead. Every time it gets weary and every time I can't see the good, I remember he died for me. I remember that there was a child given unto us and the government is on his shoulders. I remember that he is in control. He is the son of the living God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a revelation about my situation I'm closing in dark seasons you need a revelation watch it it means to disclose or to uncover what's already there wow I wish I had somebody he says flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you but my father which is in heaven and this rock the revealed Christ is what I'm going to build my church in, on. In other words, the living church, the church of the living God is literally built on the fact that we can see what already exists but the world can't see. Revelation is just full disclosure or the uncovering of what's already there. In other words, the reason I believe it's going to get better and the reason I have hope in the midst of all of this darkness, the reason why I do not live in fear is because I see that there is a better day where others can't see past what they're dealing with right now. I, I have a revelation about my situation so I don't handle my stuff the way that everybody else does. Believers have to be on another page. And I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you that you will not lose faith. I want to pray that revelation of Christ will break out in homes everywhere. This, this, this is what was missing from the church. God is saying, you have built your sanctuaries. You've kept all of your holy days and what we call holidays and we even put them before me but you got a lot of people in leadership that can't even see me they have no revelation they have no prophetic voice no prophetic ear no prophetic eye but God is restoring us and there is a prophetic move that is arising that is going to be an authentic move and all of these people who have benefited, Lord, have mercy, I feel God. All of these people that have benefited, God just quickened my spirit and say, said that this season is for them to dry up. 
those that were benefiting from prophecy and the prophetic and they're not getting calls to come on planes now. They're not being paid $10,000 to come give me a prophetic word right now. God is saying, I'm drying up a lot of that. There will still be false prophets. But God said, I'm giving my church the opportunity now to rise. I'm going to rise, raise up another genre, another, uh, what's the word, Father? A a another, another fabric of prophet. One that is authentic and one that is real and one that is true. One that is true. I want you to begin to speak this into your homes and into your living rooms. Speak it. Prophet arise. Prophet. Prophet arise. Come on. Come begin to pray that in your homes. Prophet arise. Prophet. God, we thank you for this prophetic move right now. That it's raising. That it's raising. It's raising. It's raising. It's raising. God, let your spirit move in every place in this world begin to overshadow it now father god and let your agenda be done let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven god we thank you god that nothing will sneak up on us amos 3 and 7 surely you will do nothing except you first reveal it to your prophet god let the spirit of revelation let the spirit of revelation hit this land hit this country god i thank you now that people who did not believe in prophecy before will come back believing because they have heard the word of the lord there are those that believe that the bible is already complete and that you're not speaking but man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth let this world know you're still talking you're still talking you're still talking you're still talking in the name of jesus Come on, stir it in your homes. Stir it, stir it. We're praying now. We're stirring it now. We're stirring it. We're stirring it. Revelation is breaking out. Revelation is breaking out. Revelation is breaking out. Come on, Father. Let the people see. Open the eyes of your people. Open the eyes of your people. Open the eyes of your people. Come on, begin to pray. Continue. Pray, pray, pray. Stir it now. Stir it. Stir it in the name of Jesus. Stir it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands and give him glory. We glorify your name, Father. If there's somebody here watching by live, somebody on this broadcast, this telecast, this Facebook live, or if you're watching it by YouTube, and you don't know the Lord, we want to give you this opportunity to make him your personal savior right now. You don't have to wait. The Lord is adding to the church even while we're not in the building. People are being saved. People are giving their life to the Lord. God, we thank you now. We thank you that you're giving us an opportunity. Somebody hearing this, give your life to him. If thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. If you're looking for a place to worship, you're looking for a body, a, a group to be a part of an assembly to be a part of we want you to know that new hope is welcoming you it's welcoming you those of you watching this there'll be some things in the comments you can just click on that form and fill it out and we'll make sure we reach you today we thank god for you come on clap your hands let's give god glory for his word i want you to touch the people in your home just in your home in your home and tell them revelation is breaking out Tell them our eyes are open, our eyes are open, our eyes are open, our eyes are open. Hallelujah! We give you glory. Listen, thank you for watching. Just a couple of announcements. I want you to bear these announcements in mind. I want you to join us this week, starting tomorrow, for our Holy Week services beginning Monday night at 7 p.m. nightly. All right, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Join us on the Sion Roberts Ministries Facebook page, this very one, for you to watch our Holy Week services. The pastors are going to be awesome all week long. Tomorrow night, um, one of our pastors, Pastor Tim Grayson, will be going on tomorrow night. And we're excited, he's a fireball for Christ. He'll start us off with, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's Monday night, starting Monday night, Monday night at 7 p.m. all week long. On Friday, 
we will have two. We'll have one in the morning on Good Friday at 8 a.m. and one at night at 7 p.m., all right, on this coming Friday. That's all week long. We're going all the way up to Saturday, and I'll conclude Holy Week on next Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. We'll still be in our series of rock in a weary land, all right? Our youth ministry, um, we want you to participate. Those of you who are watching, all our youth ages 3 to 11, a lot of you all, we need more of you all to participate in this one. We just got done with our Jesus Loves Me um, posting, and I thank God for those of you who participated in that. But I need you all, the ages 3 to 11, I need your children to complete a craft and or color a picture that reflects resurrection of Jesus Christ, all right? So have them color a picture, draw a picture, do some kind of craft, and then we're going to take pictures of it and post. Make sure you post a picture of your child with their picture. We're going to post that all this week. We want to make sure you do that. Tag the church. Uh, tag Sion Roberts Ministry, or you can tag me personally. Just make sure you're tagging us. A picture or a craft that represents resurrection, and when you post it, tag it. Hashtag New Hope Strong. Hashtag New Hope Strong. All right? I need you to remember to complete your U.S. census, right? Not a lot of people in Gary have done that. We need Gary, Indiana to step up. Complete your census so that you can be counted in this data because we need these resources, especially now. Uh, we're missing 30% of the data in Gary, Indiana. So we need you to complete that. You may complete it on the phone, online, or by mail. You can visit 2020census.gov or you can go to 1-800-923-8282. Again, you can go to 2020census.gov or you can go to 1-800-923-8282. All right, God bless you. Remember New Hope Steam Academy, we're looking to help you with your children. We're looking to tutor some of your children or give them help in English, math, and reading. We need you to call in and let us know in the, in the office, 219-883-5743. Some of you have been pulling your hair out. Some of you having tr trouble helping your kids in certain subjects. Let us help you. We want to help you with our STEAM Academy. Call the church, 219-883-5743. All right, now it's time to give. We want you all to be a blessing. I'm going to say this because I haven't said it in a while. We want to confess this over our offering before we give. I want you to repeat it after me. Father God, today I come into your house bringing my tithe and my offering according to Malachi 3 and 10. Thank you for rebuking the devourer on my behalf. Because I'm a faithful and consistent giver, I am not limited to the world's economy. You bless me to be a blessing. I speak your word over my finances. And I'm believing for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, bills paid off, unexpected income, inheritances, bills decreased, blessings and increase, favor with God and man, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, generosity, increased capacity, witty inventions, and creative ideas. Here's the praising part. Thank you, Jesus, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. The ways to give are going to show on the screen. You can give cash app, dollar sign, New Hope Gary, one word, all caps. You can give by push pay, which is our app, which is the easiest way to access us, even see us live on Facebook and YouTube through the app, or you can mail in, cash, check, money order, or drop off. God bless you. We're praying for you. It's Holy Week, y'all. Let's make sure we tune in all week long starting tomorrow night. We love you. New Hope Strong.